everyone. We're at the end of the winter series for our kids weekly devotional. This week is the last week of this topic. We've been talking about the names of Jesus and I hope it's been fun and I hope it's been a good way for you to uh, interact with the Bible. Maybe it's led to some good conversations with your moms and dads and grandmas and grandpas or whoever you're watching these with. We're going to go into an Easter series right after this because Easter is coming up really soon. Um, I'm really excited, though, to talk to you today about Jesus as King, and it leads really well right into the Easter series. So I'm excited to talk with you today about this. So we will be in Zechariah 9.9. So Zechariah, it's not John the Baptist's father, Zechariah, but the prophet Zechariah. Um, it's the second to last book in the Old Testament, so kind of in the middle of your Bible. So we will read Zechariah 9, 9 together. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. Righteous and having salvation is he humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. Nice work. Pretend for a moment that you lived hundreds of years before Jesus was born. You didn't know what cars were. You didn't know what phones were. You probably didn't live in a house that had a heating system besides a fire. Um, so imagine you lived a really, really long time ago, even before Jesus was born. How would you imagine a king would be? What would that person have? How would that person dress? How would that person announce himself if he came into a room or a city? My mind kind of wanders to something kind of like um, the scene in Aladdin, the cartoon Aladdin and the live action one where Aladdin has been transformed into a prince from a humble um, street rat. And he enters the city atop a giant elephant and there's hundreds of other elephants and giraffes and exotic creatures coming in in a huge parade. And Aladdin has hundreds of servants and entertainers and there's nothing he has to do except be a prince. He has everything done for him. He wears the fanciest clothes. He's not even recognizable to the actual person he was because he was changed by the genie. So that's kind of what my mind thinks of as a king. So in Zechariah, what we just read, written about 600 years before Jesus' birth, it's telling about a great king that will come. And the kings of those days were maybe a very similar to the scene in Aladdin where kings can do whatever and go wherever they want because they are the king. But this king that Zechariah is talking about isn't walking, sorry, isn't riding on elephants or stallions, but he's on a small and humble donkey. Uh, when this was written, Zechariah's readers and hearers probably had a different, difficult time understanding what exactly he was talking about. Um, how could a king ride such a humble, tiny, uh, common animal as a donkey or even a baby donkey? But that's exactly what Jesus did, right? Jesus entered Jerusalem a week before his death, riding on a donkey, a colt. The people fanned him with palm branches because they remembered, some of them probably remembered the words of Zechariah, of his uh, prophecy. Remember, behold, your king is coming, humble and mounted on a donkey, a colt, the foal of a donkey. Jesus, though king, is coming as one of us common people for now. So the king is the ruler of a country or a region. He rules over anyone and everyone. Anything that he wants can happen. It's not like in our country we have 
a president. And although the president has lots of power, the president also has to follow the rules of our land. He has to get a he or she has to get a lot of things checked before they can really do much. But a king, a kingdom is sort of set up differently. And, and there's a reason that the founding fathers of our country did not set up a kingdom as they had in England, because they had seen where that king did not use his power well. So, so Jesus is coming as a king, but he's coming as the best king. He's not coming as a king that, that um, will harm us in any way. If we love him, we'll, we'll be with him forever. And he's the, the perfect king, the most just king. He is the king of kings. He's such a good king that he kind of snuck in and wasn't really seen as the king that everybody thought he would be at that time. It was only the hearers of the prophecies like Zechariah who realized that this person coming in on a donkey is actually the king. So we're going to end our little series by doing a little craft. And I've got lots of um, very colorful, royal looking um, clothes on today. I've got my gold goblets and I've got purple things. Purple is a very royal color. But there's one thing missing. What's the thing missing on my head? A crown. So I'm going to make a crown. You're welcome to follow along if you like or you can do it another time. So for this crown you will need two pieces of colored or white paper. I chose pink and you're going to Hold them together like this, and you're going to cut in the hot dog way. The hot dog way is the long way. This is the hamburger way. It took me about 30 years to learn that, so it's okay if it's confusing. We're going to cut down the middle. Oops, I think I did it wrong. That's okay. So now we have four strips of paper, and you're going to want to tape or staple two of them together. This is the part that's going to go around your head. So for this project, you're going to need tape or staples, crayons, and paper, and maybe scissors if you want to make your crown special. So I've got this long piece. This is going to go around the back of my head, okay? And then on these other half pieces, you're going to draw or cut um, a design. I'm going to go with the alligator mouth design because... That's the way I imagine a crown would look. And then you can color it. So I might write, Jesus is king. I don't think that's bright enough to see, but I wrote, Jesus is king on my crown. And I'm going to connect it to my two pieces together. Gotta see how, how big it is on my head. That's about right. Okay, so here's my crown. Oh, it's a little big, that's okay. So you can make your crown. I'd love to see your crown. <laughs> if you want to show me a picture, tell me about it if I see you on Zoom or at church. And um, yeah, so Jesus is king. Isn't that great? Jesus is the king of kings. He is the best king. He is the biggest king. He is the most powerful king. But he came in the most humble of ways. He did not come and tear down everything else. He came as a humble servant on a donkey or the colt of a donkey as we read in Zechariah. Bye.